You're talking about crises? You're talking about crises. Come on. <laughs> anyway. I, uh, <sighs> anyway. Okay, uh, let me read just a couple of quick comments and we'll get into the last story. Uh, Rue Bird Dragon says, I hear from anti vaxxers that because the pharma company can't be held liable for bad reactions and breaking through infections. Um, yeah, I mean, I get why, like, not. Like they can't be held liable for breakthrough infections. They specifically say that it only gives you so much protection, not more. But and like I'm I'm down for us having a conversation about the lies and the excesses and the exploitation of big pharma. It's just super convenient when this is the only time that certain yeah. people bring it up. I'm also curious. Top I mean, usually big pharma, pharma, usually big pharma makes money off of keeping you sick and continue to have things that they can give you consistently, consistently, consistent and can also make money off of you. They don't have an end game of their money making. This would be some sort of end game if enough people yeah. can get vaccinated. I don't, it doesn't match up with their normal approach to making money off of you. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Hardwood Games, thank you for subscribing. Uh, the Ur Dragon says camera, woman, person, Diet Coke. That was a crisis, man. <laughs> that was so a crisis. How about like when you had an interview and you were asked about QAnon, you were like, well, I don't know. I hear that they like me. They seem like very nice people. They're very worried about Satan. That was a crisis. Anyway, okay. That's enough crises for now. We'll have more for you later. Top 100 Trump crises coming up soon. Jesus. <laughs> uh, but let's um let's go back to this. Okay. <clears throat> Never thought we were gonna get to this block. <laughs> So we've shown you uh, multiple bits of footage from the school board meetings of crazy parents standing up and trying to encourage the schools to allow COVID to roam free like the mighty buffalo. Um, so we decided to mix it up. We have footage uh, going around of an individual, the founder of the Tennessee Holler. Here is a reasonable person speaking at one of these meetings. Justin Canoe, I'm a dad in Williamson County. <clears throat> Didn't plan on speaking, but. Here we go. Uh, first of all, critical race theory is not in our schools, and it never was. And the people here to complain about it did not know what it was six months ago and had never heard of it. That's why they're going after diversity, equity, and inclusion instead and trying to pretend they're the same thing. They aren't. And frankly, there aren't many communities around the globe that need DEI more than this one that we live in. On another note, I'm a dad of a new kindergartner, and her first day was right after the chaos last week. She went to school and was one of just a few kids in her class wearing a mask, which made her ask me why she had to. My answer was because we want to take care of other people. She's five years old, but she understood that concept. And it's disappointing that more adults around here can't seem to grasp it. I asked a pastor friend of mine, and he was very clear there's no actual biblical justification for using the Bible to get out of a mask mandate passed by a majority of this elected board. But thousands are doing it anyway, calling it a religious exemption, which is frankly just sad. Avoiding masks is not in the Bible, but taking care of others is. And now today we have Governor Lee's executive order to allow opt-outs, which is government overreach undercutting a local decision. If you only like democracy when it goes your way, you don't actually like democracy. Thank you. A lot of great points. That last point, I think, is great as well. And yeah, it's indisputable. They have no interest whatsoever in democracy. They want to be in power. That's basically it. But yeah, that is a that is a reasonable person. And you'll notice, by the way, the crowd is pretty silent. Whereas yep. you have like the crazy green shirt guy from last Friday, who's just like talking about the spirit of the wind going through you in Nuremberg, and like a whole bunch of Facebook moms and dads are like, whoa, it's the best. But of course, that guy was far more articulate than the vast majority of us would be in that case. But he is actually representative of what the majority of Americans believe. They want their kids to be safe. They want there to be masks. They want people to be vaccinated. But we've come to a point where that sort of thing doesn't generally go viral. It doesn't get the cheers, just being reasonable, caring about your neighbor, these sort of core American things actually stands out. And so great yeah. job by Justin there. The basis of our of, of our agendas and policies now, especially with people who just watch and support folks, is based on how much of a, a cheering crowd you can get behind you. And the reason there's a cheering crowd there is to hype up your stupidity. So if you say something that means nothing and no one's there to cheer it on, then you kind of you're sitting there in silence of stupidity. So if there's a cheering crowd behind you, you have to go <laughs> when you do that, and then they cheer for you. It doesn't sound as dumb anymore because like, oh man, they have a bunch of dumbasses that are following them. So whatever that reason is that they try to do this and and, and use it to make some kind of a applause line, 
that's what we base our, our policies on. Applause lines versus constant facts from this guy and reasonable things. Because if you have to sit and listen to reason and, and facts and a real agenda, you have to go, I have to think about something. <laughs> Thinking about something is something that we've turned off Americans consistently. I remember when Obama was running, they said, this this guy is an elitist. He went to Har- or Princeton, I don't care where he went. He went to Harvard, isn't he so that. smart? Don't you hate smart people? Yeah, we've flipped the script to where you have to celebrate stupidity and ignorance. And that's the basis for our policies. And now all this whole wing of politicians are like, let's cater to the stupidity and the ignorance. And that's where yep. we are now. So someone like this, Get silenced because they're going. What words did he just say? He didn't even scream. <laughs> he didn't call anyone. He didn't even talk about the, the wind in our soul. <laughs> he didn't clear. do any of that. He didn't. <laughs> what you gonna do when the wind blows through you? I would be. You'd be cheering for me if you were here. Surely you would be. <laughs> anyway, great job there. Let's have more. Let's have more people be reasonable. Let's work towards that. Anyway, Jr. As always, thank you for joining us. You make it Big News Wednesday. We appreciate you being here. Uh, congrats on the continuation of um, only only yeah. JRs. Uh, we're very happy for you. New content upcoming. New content. I I hope not. But anyway, thank you. Uh, okay, everybody, yes. uh, that's it for the damage report. But indisputable is coming up uh, very soon. Dr. Rashad Ritchie, Dina Dahl. It's going to be a lot of fun. You can stay at Twitch.tv/tyt or head to YouTube.com/indisputabletyt to watch that in just a few. Later on today, I will be joining Anna Kasparian for the second hour of the Young Turks. And there's a lot of other great stuff happening besides. But for now, stay safe out there. Stay safe, stay safe there. See you soon. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Indisputable. 
I'm your host Rashad Richard, good to be with you. We got a lot on the agenda today. Breaking down news of the day with me will be none other than Dina Dahl, a law and crime legal analyst. Always a good time with Ms. Dahl. Also the bullpen segment, my debate segment, we will have Ashley St. Clair. Ashley St. Clair is author of Elephants Are Not Birds and director of operations at Arsenal Media Group. Um, we'll talk about anti-mask, anti-vax uh, movement, LGBTQ rights, uh, and maybe a couple of other things uh, we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, my top story for today. Uh, there's a guy who blurted out, hail Hitler, during a board meeting, doing a uh, Nazi uh, salute basically. Well, this guy, has now been fired from his job. A man accused of giving a Nazi salute and saying hail Hitler during a board of education meeting in Detroit has lost his job as a tennis instructor at a local health and fitness club, the Metro Times reports. Okay, let's go to that. Let's go to that graphic. Okay. We reported on this story when it first happened, all right? People were outraged. Now, this individual, he's an anti-mask person. But he decided to utilize um, something that is deeply troubling in order to express his opinion during that board meeting. Speaking to the Metro Times, the owner of the sports club said that Paul Markham's bio has been taken off their website after news got around that he flashed the salute during a heated debate at the August 17th meeting regarding mandatory mask in schools. Let's put up the picture of what they took down. That's him, that's the guy, obviously a world class tennis instructor, right? You don't see it, neither do I. Markham allegedly made the gesture toward a Susan Buzdiker, who is Jewish and two African American women. He had no problem with this, thought it was quite appropriate. All three women supported mask mandates, Deadline Detroit previously reported. Ms. Buzdiker said this, and I quote, it's a hate crime, and it happened on school property. Buzz Docker, a mother of a student entering middle school after a year of virtual learning, told Detroit, uh, Deadline Detroit, I'm not taking it lightly. And you should not. You should not take it lightly, okay? You have to make examples out of individuals like this. And that's exactly what has happened. This private company has taken, uh, taken action and um, good for them. All right, to talk more about this, uh, Dina Dahl, what are your thoughts here? You know, okay, so about what he said, you know, some people could say it's free speech, right? But there are exceptions to free speech. One is fighting words and incitement to violence, which this, I think, would be very easy to argue that it would be. And so he could be, you know, have a crime, a disorderly conduct crime based on this. So when she was saying this is a hate crime, a hate crime is an enhancement to some underlying crime. The underlying crime could be disorderly conduct, there could be an enhancement to a hate crime. So that is possible. And then just to speak really briefly on this idea that sometimes we hear about cancel culture and how maybe it's unfair or he doesn't have rights. This is a private company that fired him. Private companies are are allowed to hire and fire anybody they want. And they did it theoretically because it was good business for them. They did not want somebody like him representing the company. They have absolute right to do that. He was He's not a um, member of any kind of protected group that would have had some sort of enhanced legal review on this. So, you know, they were well within their rights to fire him. And it is true that he could, although it doesn't seem like that's happening now, there could be some sort of um, criminal charge against him as a result of it as well. Yeah, you make a great point because last time I checked, uh, people that support Adolf Hitler, they are not part of a protected class. Uh, they are in a class all by themselves. And the private company 
Well, their private company, they have a duty and obligation to protect the brand of that private company. Naturally, the fact that you have an employee who, by the way, is in a leadership position. This guy had his bio and picture on their website. He's one of the front standing employees of this particular company. Well, now you have a picture and you have video of him doing the Nazi salute and saying, hail Hitler. Well, that's a problem, okay? And I don't think anyone should argue that this is somehow protected political speech when obviously the arena that he did it in was a school board meeting. He did create chaos, I think is a strong argument for disorderly conduct. But then the connection to that arena is the fact that there's a private company who says we do not support this kind of rhetoric from our employees. Well within their rights to do this. Okay, go ahead. No, I was just gonna agree with you 100%. All right, well, let me tell you something that's quite interesting. Parents who are paying thousands of dollars a year for their child to go to a religious private institution. They were handled in the most egregious way. So let me give you some background to this story. At a religious school in Boko Raton, the school's white leader is caught on camera. Now this is supposed to be the man of God. The man of God is caught on camera screaming at black parents of a student that attends the institution. That leader identified as brother Daniel Albin is heard on camera ordering that the Boca Raton police be called to the scene of something that wasn't even a crime. The reason why he wanted them to come to the scene is because the parents arrived to obtain the child's distance learning schedule and his parking pass. Dear brother, Aubin decides on the spot that he is now going to permanently expel the student. The family believes this is because the student is black. Here's the video. Hey, shut that off. Call the police, please. First of all, sir. Call the police. First of all, sir, nobody needs to be in this. Call the police. She's videotaping me. Shut that off now. Nobody. I'm not being here. Who raised you? I am not. You're a man of God. You raised you. Who raised you, bro? Who raised you? You call yourself a man of God? Who raised you? 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 Who raised you raise, your, you raise your voice at your wife like that? Everybody, I'm not your child. I'm your son, and I'm doing that now. He's no longer goes to school. I'm not your child. He's no longer goes to school. I'm not your child. The school bombers. Maybe I want to hear your side of the story. My son was uh, instructed not to come back to school until he has a negative positive t- uh, negative COVID test. Okay. So we left him home. We came here today to get his schedule and his parking pass. Okay. As soon as the young man came out, and I have it recorded, he just, he must have, no, we're gonna stay right here. Okay. He must have assumed that we were here for what occurred yesterday about my son. I left my son home. So he immediately started screaming at us and said, I don't know why you're here, leave. Let's put up a picture of this man of God. So you can see him clearly, okay? That's brother Daniel Albin, there he is. The woman talking is the mother, her name is Kay Early. Kay Early is also an attorney at law, okay? She's an attorney at law. These parents were not being disruptive. These parents were being responsible, practicing the COVID mandate of the institution. These parents went there to be responsible to their child and get the distance learning package that must be picked up so that the child can keep up with the rest of the peers at the school. But this guy comes out guns blazing, yelling at the parents and then the power trip, the power trip of saying that oh, now your child is expelled. 
can no longer attend this institution. You mean to tell me these parents are paying for you to treat them and their child like this? You're paying money to be here. Those parents are paying money to have this level of treatment. Uh, Ms. Early said she received a call from the Palm Beach uh, Diocese School Superintendent Gary Galo. That was on Saturday morning, who offered to reverse the expulsion. Oh, that is just so kind of them. Oh, we are going to reverse what he did. But until Brother Albin is disciplined, she said, she's unsure what the right move is for her child. Oh, I have a recommendation. <laughs> I have a damn good recommendation. Lawsuit, discriminatory practices. Let's put up a picture of um, Brother Daniel Albin again. He is president of St. Paul the Second Academy. You saw how he acted. You saw exactly how he spoke, not only to the mother, um, but to the father here. You saw his attitude. Now, here's why that's important. I'm a former high school teacher, current college professor. I know one thing, leadership, especially in academic settings, leadership matters supremely. When you have a leader like that, imagine who he hires, imagine who he protects, imagine who he supports, imagine what he supports. Dina, uh, Dina Dahl, what, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, I agree. He sets the tone for the whole school. And, you know, these parents had, you know, a right. Even though this was private property, they had an ex a reasonable expectation to be on this property since their yeah. son was enrolled and they were paying tuition. And I think it's questionable whether or not he was even legally able to just expel them outright. I'm sure they have some sort of due process rights around this. It is interesting though, because this is a private school and maybe their charter really does give just him the sole um, power to that. Whereas maybe a public school, you would have a lot more processes involved. But you know, either way, what I was also struck by was the fact that he called the police. And you know, we talk a lot about um, you know police interaction. Action and you know how it often goes badly. And the, the mom here was so articulate, as you say, she was a lawyer. She did a great job explaining the situation. Not everybody would in that because it could be very triggering to be called the police in a situation like that. But so you know, I think it's like we don't know, need to just look at like police reform, but we need to look at like why people are calling the police because once the police get involved, you know, things can happen, and it's those people behind the phone phone call that we need to kind of take a look mm -hmm. at. And here he was, like you said, he was in charge of students. Yeah. What are these students being taught? How are they gonna be raised as adults? Are they gonna then call on you know police on these types of matters? Because you know all the students heard about this. Oh, if absolutely. If he come out and apologize, they're gonna all think this is justified. And we're gonna have a thousand kids maybe going and doing this. And that problem just gets spread even further. Mm -hmm. Remember, when you call the police, you calling a gun. That's what you're calling. When you call the cops, you're calling a gun to the situation because you believe obviously a gun needs to handle this. So when this um, president of the school decided to order another staff member because he doesn't do his own dirty work, he ordered a staff member, call the police, right? In his mind, somehow, a conflict which is really a non-existent conflict if he would have listened. A conflict between two black parents in reference to a black child does not warrant his attention. It warrants him calling the police. If he would have simply taken the moment to listen to what they were trying to tell him, he would know the child is not at the school. There is no argument about the child being at the school. They were not trying to get the child back in school. They were following the protocol as designed and laid out by the institution. But he didn't give them even that benefit. He did not give them that level of courtesy. And these are black people who are paying for him to be oppressive. They are literally financing their own oppression through this institution.
I'll let you have the last words on it. No, I think you're absolutely right. And you could see that actually in the video with the police officers, that they clearly didn't want to be there. But that is their job, is to go where they are called. And so we need to, you know, police reform, yes, but we need to do deeper reform so the police aren't obligated to come to situations like this because it is their job. Yeah, let's do something. Let's put this picture up again. All right, it's coming. Look at that smile. <laughs> and the guy is hell inside of a Christian school, treating people like they all are beneath him. Shame on this individual. We're going to follow the story because a few things need to happen now. The um, Palm Beach Diocese school superintendent says, okay. Um, what the person did, what this president did was wrong. We are going to offer to reverse expelling the student. But here's what really needs to happen. A full apology, not just from the uh, covering organization, but directly from Daniel Aubin, the president of that school. There needs to be a full apology. Um, secondly, I would also argue, um, that they as an institution, they should implement some true design in the curriculum to make sure that there's a level of diversity in the training and the curriculum, not only of the staff, but also of the students. All right, that's my take on it. Um, and hell, the, the mother who's an attorney may just sue them, okay? All right, we got more on the other side. It is indisputable, stick and stay. Oh shoot, I need some fresh shirts. Okay, let's see, new arrivals, what's new? This is amazing, what? <laughs> Thank you, user. I have now injected my code into Shop TYT. Proceeds from this shirt will benefit me directly. <sighs> when you were growing up, what did you want to be? I think. I was starting to think I don't want to do one thing, and I did live up to that. Well, mission accomplished then, because Dave was a geologist, yeah, and now he's you know helped found the Young Turks. Even within TYT, you've done a lot of different things. Yeah. So if you want to do different things, you nailed it. All right, last story to end on is a Dave story. Whenever there was something like obvious glaring, he would go up and ask them about it. Like it'd be like a giant church, right, and somebody standing in front of it. The usual Dave. Would go, ah! Pull up right in front of them. Be like, hey, do you, do you know where there's a church around here? And they're like, right here. Just, it's right here. Practical <laughs> jokes. Spice up life a little. Welcome to Breaking News with Brett Ehrlich. I'm Brett Ehrlich, and this is Breaking News with Brett Ehrlich. The Trump, Trump, Trump administration, Trump mandated Trump, that Trump, every Trump, other Trump, word Trump, B Trump, Trump, Trump. Trump. Our generation actually has a voice to say who we want. For the first time ever, we are the biggest voting bloc in America. One of the people we've been talking about for months and months will be the president of the United States for the next four years. And for a lot of us, this is the first time that we're ever going to vote. Do you have any idea how much of a difference four years makes? The action that we take right now doesn't just affect us right now. Discussion is important, but words aren't the only thing. You have to take action. So that we can actually affect real change instead of just talking about it. Get out there and take a part in making a difference. Every voice really does matter, whether young or old, especially young people, get out there and vote, damn it. Now, more than ever, we can make a change. I'm gonna vote because I want this country to be different. I don't want the older generation to decide our future. I wanna make this world a better place for my son. You can make change. Vote IRL. Vote IRL. Vote IRL. Vote IRL. Vote IRL. Vote IRL. 
Vote in real life. Vote IRL. Can we eat in here? Joe Crowley is a congressman from New York. He's very powerful, arguably one of the top uh, Democrats in the House. But there's someone finally challenging him, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. The election is today. If she wins, David beats Goliath. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has defeated Joe Crowley. You made that happen. You're David. You just beat Goliath tonight. 2018 is a warm-up act. Wait till you get a load of 2020. All right, welcome back. We got a lot of comments. Let's get to it. I am, I'm a damn lib says, oh, that tennis club was waiting for an excuse to dump this dude. <laughs> it looked like it. And it also looked like he was using a profile pic from 1988. Did anybody catch that? Okay. Mickey C, the silver hair dragon says, my guess is that they offered to reverse the expulsion when they learned the young man's mother is a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, YouTube super chat. Max Zaro uh, says only lost his job in Germany. Saying something like that would get you six months in prison. Quick, it sure will actually. Okay, my poet Kelly O'Hara. Yelling hell, Hitler should never be in style. People should stop spewing that bile. This racist trope is so tired, and I'm glad. He got fired. Hashtag by Adolf Bars. Uh, thank you for that, Kelly. Uh, Mickey and my crafts. My father warned me when I was nine years old that there are a lot of Christians in quotations, hypocrites in the GOP. Now that I'm 61 years old, I realize my father was a political prophet. <laughs> yeah, glad you know that now. Uh, Mary Marianne Kelly says, I grew up in Boca. Uh, it's Highly uh, class is high class racist. All right. Um, is it Jago de Rogue? How is a principal of St. Paul treating Paul's people like this? <laughs> that's that's fancy. Okay, uh, David Morris, love how the doc drills the image of the suspect <laughs> into our minds. Put up his picture. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lord Harlock, Twitch. And is anyone surprised by any of this? The most pious of organizations are riddled with extremists like this guy. Osborne says religious male Karen. I mean, yes, the Karenicity definitely runs deep in him. And Sarah uh, Carolina 88, the fact that he could just expel a student with a sentence is disgusting and absurd. And remember, if he's talking to parents like this, how do you think he treats students? Hmm? Okay, all right, uh, next story, ladies and gentlemen, Alan West, okay, a Republican darling of the conservative movement. Uh, his wife got arrested for suspected uh, DWI. This is so interesting because this is Mr. Pro Police, Mr. Systemic Racism Does Not Exist, Alan West, okay, on Monday. Dallas police actually defended their arrest of his wife. Her name is Angela Graham West. Alan West is running for governor of Texas. The arrest was for intoxicated driving. According to the Texas Tribune, at a press conference, the police chief Garcia showed a video of his wife at a traffic stop on Friday, a field sobriety test and arrest. He gave a few details 
when asked about what portions of the field sobriety test Graham West might have failed. Here's a portion, it's a 19 minute video. We had to shorten it, but here's a portion of it. So would you be willing to blow your breath into this? Sure. Okay, um, so have you ever blown air into a balloon before? A little bit. A little bit, okay, so it's like the same concept, okay? You're, do you're giving me a breath in my sir? Yes, ma'am. For what? Um, so it's just it's just gonna let me know if you've had any alcohol today, okay? So, so pretty much it's the same concept, it's blowing air into a balloon. What did I do other than not stay switch lanes without, I mean, just give me a citation. You've put me through all of this now. So. All right, fine, all right. okay. So I'm gonna hold it. All right, so all you gotta do is take a deep breath. So ma'am, you, who is the, uh, you say you have a child in the back seat of yes. your car? Yes. Uh, is it your child or someone else? My grandson. It's your grandson? Okay, is there anyone that can come pick him up? Why, what's going on? Is there anyone that, can, that you could call like right now? To come pick him up? Yes. Okay, um, can you tell me who that person could be? Who the the parents. Be? The parents? All right, um, so it's gonna be a 30. A 30. So ma'am, can you just um, take a step forward for me? Yes. Can you place your hands on your back for me? Okay. Yeah, she got arrested for DWI, suspected of DWI. Uh, she went to jail, she got booked. Grandchild was in the car, a parent had to come pick up. Uh, that grandchild, this all happened in front of the grandchild. Uh, the breathalyzer did not, did not register her as intoxicated. It came back inconclusive, blood work was taken later. That blood work has not come back yet. I actually don't think she was intoxicated, I could be wrong. But I don't think it will come back that she was intoxicated. But she did get arrested and I feel bad for her because she's married to this guy. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm highly pissed off right now. It's a little bit at about three o'clock in the morning. I was down in Waco, Texas having dinner with Ted Nugent and some other people. And I got back to Dallas to find out that someone had arrested my wife, Angela. When she had my grandson Jackson in the back seat of the car and charged her with quote unquote suspected DUI. And now I'm down here at the Dallas County Jail. They won't allow me to see Angela. They're saying that there's nothing I can do. They will not allow me to see a, a supervisor. Angela and I've talked to people that had dinner with her at PF Chang's here in Dallas. She had water and lemonade. This is crap. Now I support the thin blue line, but this is in cities. They put my grandson at risk, at jeopardy, left him with a couple of police officers and carted his grandmother into jail when she had water and lemonade. That's what witnesses said, they were with her at dinner, water and lemonade for dinner. I'm beyond livid and I'm telling you something. The Dallas County Sheriff's Office, the Dallas Police Chief, I want an explanation of this. I wanna know who arrested my wife for quote unquote suspected DUI when she had water and lemonade and her breathalyzer test came up negative. He can't say it, he can't say it, he can't go there and say it. He can't say police out of control. He can't say my wife should have been given the benefit of the doubt. He can't say it should have been a conclusive breathalyzer before you lock up a grandmother and take her grandchild away. He can't say it, he can't talk about systemic racism, prejudice in the system of law enforcement, he can't do it. But what he can do is tell you, he just had dinner with Ted Nugent, he can tell you that. How in the hell are you in the middle of a damn tragedy, Alan West? And you're going on your live, well, I just had dinner with Ted Nugent.
and they have arrested my wife. I am livid. Just got off the phone with Ted Nugent and he's livid too. You're campaigning, buddy. You don't fool me, okay? You know good and damn well why your wife was not given the benefit of the doubt. And don't hit me, don't hit me with where one black officer was involved. Systemic racism is an institutional element inside of these industries of law and justice. Your wife, I believe, sir, your wife should have been given the benefit of the doubt here. There's some background to this story that needs to be exposed. Um, but you, you're outraged over your personal incident while invalidating the systemic incidents that happened to black and brown people all across the United States of America. Miss me with it. I'm not covering this story because of you, Alan West. I'm covering it because it's the right story to cover. I'm not covering this story because it just happened to you or to your wife. I'm covering this story because it's within the context of a significant bias that happens against in particular black women in situations like this. Let's get down to the rest of the story, okay? The affidavit that attorney Todd Shapiro provided to the Tribune claims that Graham West, that is the wife, 61 years of age, showed signs of intoxication during portions of the field sobriety test. Shapiro attributed the failures in the field sobriety test to a brain aneurysm that Graham West had experienced behind her right eye a few years ago. Shapiro told the Texas Tribune, this is a quote, she told the officer about it being the aneurysm. And there's no mention anywhere in the, and talking about the report, probable cause affidavit that this woman had some health issues that could affect her performance or mask themselves as signs of intoxication. Now typically, if you let an, an officer know that you have a particular medical condition that could express itself as if you cannot properly pass a sobriety test, even if you get arrested, it is supposed to be noted, okay? According to the probable cause affidavit that Shapiro provided to the Tribune, the officer approached the vehicle and smelled a scent of alcohol coming from within the car and said Graham West's eye was bloodshot. The officer observed that Graham West's reaction times were delayed and she seemed confused. Now, I also want to note a receipt was provided. Alan West literally was able to provide a receipt that showed his wife did not have any alcohol with her dinner that night. He provided literal receipts for that. The affidavit also noted her appearance as further evidence of intoxication, which Shapiro called shaky. Shapiro also said Graham West went and got a five panel instant urinalysis test Monday morning that also included an alcohol test. He said it showed up zero presence of drugs or alcohol. The alcohol test traces back to 80 hours, okay? Graham West attributed her driving to her listening to her GPS. And it was also said that she had been on the phone with someone. Mike Matta, president of the Dallas Police Association, defended the officer's actions and said, Lieutenant Colonel West thinks that he is special. <laughs> let me let me go back to and say that again. The police union has told pro police Republican gubernatorial candidate, Mr. Systemic Racism does not exist. We need to always protect the police. He said the police union said Lieutenant Colonel West thinks that he is special. That he should get certain treatments that every other citizen doesn't get. Is it because he's a politician? Is it because he's running for governor? Well, that's not how it goes. We believe in fair and equal treatment under the law. They're all turning, they're showing you who you are, brother. We've always been trying to show you who they are. Now you're in the situation where they're showing you who you are to them. Who your wife is to them, how does it feel? Now will you see the light, become an advocate for social justice? Tell the truth 
about systemic racism in America. Stop defending the senseless and chaotic actions of police officers that violate the rights of citizens. Or will you just run for governor and try to figure out how to fit into a system that doesn't even want you? Ms. Dahl, what are your thoughts here? Well, my thoughts are that I think we should be electing more empathetic leaders. Because the fact is, is that sadly this happens a lot. That if it doesn't happen to you or to somebody you know, then it doesn't matter. And we see this also with climate change, right? Republicans are starting to care about that more because it's happening in their district. Or COVID, when it was starting to happen in the red states, they start to speak out more. We need to care when we see it happening to others. It, yeah. You know, I mean, Alan West. He's gonna start caring about this a lot more. We'll see. Whether or not he starts talking about it in public or just privately, he's gonna be looking at this mm. much differently. But like you said, it shouldn't have been happen it shouldn't have only been because it's happening to one of his family members. Yeah. You should be able to see what's happening to people around you and empathize and be curious and want to know. And if our the people we're electing aren't able to be like that, then you know. Why are you in public service? That's so, right. So, you know, like you said, he was using this to promote himself. And I think that kind of says everything about the kind of leaders, unfortunately, a lot of the people who are running these days. Well said. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you Karen Wood. You want to call the police on him for having a barbecue on a in Sunday? You're going to feel free. Back off. I've had trouble. There's an African American man threatening my life. Okay, uh, we got two Karens here. Um, one, the male Karen, he's calling these children the N word. Uh, some of these children were as young as 11 years of age when this incident happened. Also, I want to remind you, this was a bikes up, guns down protest. Bikes up, guns down, okay? The incident took place at Miami's Brick L Avenue Bridge on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, excuse me, in 2019. When a group of teens rode their bicycles to the bridge as part of Bikes Up, Guns Down to protest the lack of affordable housing in the city, some of the protesters were as young as 11 years old. All right, let's put up a very clear picture of the male Karen here who decided to threaten, have a weapon, and to call these children the N word. His name is Mark Bartlett. There he is, Mark Bartlett, okay? Cops eventually cuffed the man on January 21st, 2019 and found his loaded gun in his car. He asked for a trial by jury on January 22nd, 2019 and pleaded not guilty on February 19th, 2019. Bruce H. Lair, Bartlett's lawyer. Filed a motion earlier this year for statutory immunity. Are you kidding me? Statutory immunity from criminal prosecution and civil action on justifiable use of force. Bartlett is now currently pushing for a stand your ground defense. Miami, that's where he's at. Ms. Dahl, you're an attorney at law. Uh, what are your thoughts here? Well, you know, he actually is charged with quite a bit. Five count, five felony counts relating to his weapon, three counts of aggravated assault with prejudice, 
you know, that's his only defense that he could claim, right? And um, if a judge decides that there's an issue of fact here and this goes to jury, it's very possible that a jury in Florida might agree with him, which is really sad. And you know, another thing here that's interesting is we know the new um, law that was passed in Florida by the governor, this anti-mob, anti-protesting law, which would have complicated this issue even more because you know, although it probably is a violation of free speech and um, freedom to assemble, he carrying a firearm would have had even more enhancements. But also those boys on their bikes blocking the street would have been criminally prosecuted. So I think it's also important for us to see as like chaotic and really awful the situation is, this new Florida law is gonna make protests like this so much worse and it's gonna criminalize peaceful protests in a way that we have never seen in this country. You know, you make a you make a remarkable point and we've been covering the insane law, the protest law that was passed in Florida and signed into law on the day of the verdict of Derek Chauvin, the killer of George Floyd. That was a code from DeSantis, the governor of Georgia, the governor of Florida to let everybody know why he was creating and signing this bill. But you're right, if this would have been the law during that time, the law would have said these children are the criminals. And the man who is the in fact criminal was the victim. That's why leadership matters. We got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. They had things, uh, levels of voting that if you ever agreed to it, you'd never have a Republican elected in this country again. We don't run our own country. We've lost our democracy and all we have left is rage. Where are the Democrats? I would be on every cable news channel screaming and yelling and talking about what the Republicans are doing right now. How do you expect us to get excited to show up to the polls for these loser Democrats? How can we have nothing but cowards? We'll never fight. Primaries are everything. Building a great wall on the southern border. You have politicians who fear monger about disenfranchised groups. The first attacker came through the visa lottery. Now they are against legal immigrants. Ending chain migration. They don't want people from those countries coming here because they're being racist. This guy's an absolute monumental disgrace to all of us as Americans. Stop treating us like animals and bugs and start treating us with some respect. That is what I was warning about for literally years on this program. This is is what they promised they would do if they got into power. And what do you know, they did it. I've now shown dozens of videos on the Young Turks of cops handcuffing people who are bleeding to death. His life means nothing. We have been trained to be cowards, so we're gonna handcuff that guy bleeding to death. When it comes to these protesters, who are justifiably enraged at members of their community getting gunned down and murdered by police force. We are a physical representation of our support for George Floyd. He said that this was impossible, but now we're beginning to move that boulder. And at the end, we'll get our democracy back. Primary the living hell out of these Democrats and let's take over the party. That's a ghost ship. Let's board it, and let's take it. to another episode of The Damage Report, another week of the news. I am John Iderola and we've got a doozy of a show for you. My God, is DC up its own ass today. We have put someone into power in our country who is so crazy, they have finally out crazied North Korea. The US is the only country in the world that isn't part of the Paris Climate Accord. Yesterday, Donald Trump did exactly what he told us. He pulled the US out of the Iran nuclear accord. So we need to see snuff videos of how you're killing people on the streets in order for you to believe us that this has been a problem, we need to change things. I was gonna say we've been dealing with the issue of lead poisoning in this country, but that would imply that we're really doing something. We have an issue with lead poisoning and it continues. So 60 people are now dead, some of them grandmothers, many of them children. The silence of politicians on both sides of the aisle, just about only Bernie Sanders, maybe Tulsi Gabbard and a few others have actually been critical of what happened there. And the rest are cowards hiding behind silence, refusing to admit what happened yesterday. We have to be able to accept that we do things wrong in this country. 
country. You can fix and change things, make things even. What's great about our country, and this is a great example of it, is everybody's pissed off. This is the damage report, and it's all about the threats facing us each day. When something's relevant, and it's hot, and it's in the news, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to talk about it. Can we start talking about it now? I often think about the terror that my grandmother was under until she was eight or nine years old and how horrific that experience you know, must have been in this state of discomfort for the benefit of other people. People will still treat you like you're the problem. That's what we mean when we say living well black. We're just trying to live our best life. We're trying to be the best that we can be. And we're frustrated and tired of people treating us like we're criminals. All right, welcome back. We got a lot of show left, okay? Let me go to some of these viewer comments. Thank you all for engaging with the show. TYT member, our <laughs> Bernie bro with the vagina <laughs> says, Alan West is absolute trash. Dude disowned his daughter for being gay. Mm. Craig Cray Souffle says, welcome to Texas, Alan West. And this is just a reminder, you're still black. Make you see the silver hair dragon. Notice how he had to throw in that he had dinner with Ted Nugent, <laughs> trying to increase his importance. Right, <laughs> Ted won't save you, brother. Uh, YouTube super chat. R. King Juan Garcia says, I have a, neuro a neurological disorder that is progressive, and I wouldn't have been able to pass a sobriety test in the past 20 years. Uh, Reggie Barris, thank you so much for that. Um, Gonzalez, it's amazing what people are willing to throw under the bus for their own career goals. Yep. On um, the truth dragon in J09, she tried to Emmett Till some kid, no longer a Karen, but a racist SOB without the cutesy name. Uh, to hell with that. Uh, Courtney, the SLP, uh, Florida is in the news literally every day for something foolish. Literally. <clears throat> Jim Garcia. Miami trash, Florida does not have an open carry law in Miami. He is brandishing and should go to jail, but DeSantis will pardon him. That is a real possibility. Jormat9, scratch mark says, a standard conservative response, it's not okay when it happens to me. <laughs> That's right, That's the standard response. Um, <clears throat> Trekkie21, not that it hit his family, Alan West, now that it hit his family, Alan West cares about how police treat people. I mean, he's deeply concerned now, you're right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, a school teacher had a Black Lives Matter banner in her classroom. Well, the school decided to discipline her, put her under investigation for unrelated mess. And then they put her in the warehouse, clear retaliation, right? Well, that school system now has to pay her 300,000 bucks. Let me bring your attention to this new settlement in the Duval County school system. The Duval County School Board will pay a former high school teacher who displayed a Black Lives Matter flag over her classroom door $300,000 to settle a lawsuit from earlier this year. Let's put up a picture of this nice young teacher. Her name is Amy. Donna Frio, there she is, a remarkable teacher. I've done a lot of research on her, very proud of her, by the way. Um, she's a former Riverside High School teacher, then Lehigh. She um, said she was unfairly removed from her teaching position in March. She made national news saying administrators told her to take down the Black Lives Matter flag and uh, that had been hanging over her doorway. She refused. She said no, the district temporarily reassigned her to a uh, to warehouse operations and said she was being investigated for several matters, okay? That is what they do to effective school teachers like her. And I'm going to get into why she was so effective. The Southern Poverty Law Center who represented Donald, uh, Donald Frio said the reassignment was an effort on the school district's behalf 
to retaliate against the teacher and also violated her right to free speech, okay? This is her with some of her students. She's a very engaged school teacher. I got that from a Facebook page, okay? Uh, this month, the Duval School Board voted to reach a settlement um, with Donna Frio that would prevent the case from a years long court process that could potentially cost millions of dollars. Though we know we haven't done anything wrong, these are taxpayer dollars, according to a board member, Warren Jones. Um, separately, separately, her teaching contract was not renewed uh, with the Duval schools. Uh, records show that the school board agreed to pay a $300,000 settlement with $240,000 going to Ms. Donofrio and the remaining 60,000 going to her attorneys. Now, let me bring you to an organization that she works with. It's called EVAC, E-V-A-C, okay? EVAC is Cave Backwards, and it is a reference to Plato's allegory of the cave. A story of prisoners chained in a cave since birth until a liberator enters to unbind their chains and lead them to the light, tasking them with the responsibility to return to liberate others. This is a peer led organization, young people run this organization, they run it. It is peer supported, peer led, right? Well, this um, remarkable teacher, she's a catalyst for this organization. Um, every year in her high school leadership class, this teacher, this amazing, remarkable and engaged school teacher who was retaliated against, she has students read the cave, analyze the chains created by their traumatic experiences and how to break free. And doing so, students in our class began bravely sharing their stories, bonding in realizing their shared experiences with violence, loss, racism, and the justice system. I got that information from their website, evacmovement.com. Remarkable work they are doing. And this school teacher is connected to all of this. Um, Ms. Dahl, what are your thoughts here? Retaliation is a no-no, she got paid for it. They're saying that they aren't admitting to doing anything wrong. How do you see it? Well, people only really pay out lawsuits when they know that at least likely they would lose in court. And the reason why they would, we're talking about free speech a lot today, is that she has a protected free speech and that's what that sign is. The, the school does have an argument because it is a little bit more, there, schools are able to restrict speech, free speech a little bit more if they claim that it interferes with the education. Most of the case law actually has to do with students, not teachers. But my former um, professor, the Constitutional scholar Erwin Chemerinsky says it very well. You know, how are student if, if a school is supposed to teach free speech and also simultaneously deny free speech, mm. right? And that's kind of like a question here is legally, they were probably not able to do this while they paid out. But why were they trying to restrict this free mm -hmm. speech? You know, how are you teaching the children to be able to speak out and protest certain things when they're gonna fire a teacher for doing exactly that? Yeah, very well said. Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring one more story to your attention. This is so sad. Now, I'm going to blur the pictures here because I'm a decent person. Other people online, they have not blurred these young people who are engaging in acts of racism. I want to remind you that young people can be mean, but their parents can be evil. They learned it from somewhere. Let's just go to the video first. Let me explain to you what you're seeing, okay? Um, <clears throat> this, is, this is now a deactivated Instagram account uh, made by students at Salinas High School in California. Uh, it has led to outrage and demands for swift discipline. D 
the account had photos and videos of students defacing a black baby doll they named Shaniqua. Okay, they beat it, they um, defaced it, ridiculed it. Oh, it was massive and it was done pretty openly. According to the Daily Dot, um, a Twitter user posted a Twitter thread containing screenshots from the Instagram account, which was called Shaniqua.shs and dedicated to the doll. In the pictures, the black doll has his eyes, eyebrows, and mouth painted white. It also has scribble marks uh, drawn all over his face, as well as an ankle monitor drawn on it. All right. Here's a picture of the doll. Okay, very sad as a reminder. They're learning this from somewhere. Here's another picture of that Instagram account they created for this doll to beat it and to be mean. <clears throat> they learned it from somewhere. According to KSBW Action News 8, um, let's get into this other picture too. Let me put up this other graphic, all right, with the blurred face of, of the cheerleader, okay? The doll was brought out during Friday's football jamboree um, at the uh, game. Cheerleaders took pictures of the doll. Uh, and by the weekend, the video of the doll had gone viral and was the talk all over social media. By the weekend, a full investigation had been launched into the matter. And by Monday, District Superintendent Dan Burns said the person who initiated the incident um, had been identified. Okay, that's fine. But that person who initiated it obviously had a lot of support, all right? Um, this is horrible, this is sad, we're running out of time. But Ms. Dahl, if you could quickly analyze this, what are your thoughts about it socially? You know, my thoughts are students are captive audiences. Let's help them while we can. Have school counselors devoted solely to these racial incidences. I hope this high school institutes programs to eradicate this because these children were not the only ones who believe this in that school. We know that. Let's do something yeah. before they become adults. Well said. Thank you so much for joining me. Always a pleasure to have you on Indisputable. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, we got more on the other side, stick and stay. You know old school was pitched to me from Jank. It'll just be me, you, Jesus, Ben, and maybe Michael. And we're like, okay, cool, I can do that every week. As you can that see, <laughs> me, Jesus, Ben. <laughs> when you make the order, it says, you know, don't exceed $20 and one cent. So I'll just order literally anything to get it as close to that as I possibly can. I'm sorry that I ordered $45 worth of food <laughs> and got an email saying, sir, would you like to rethink that? And I, what are you talking about? I was in hell. I was just like, oh my God, the theater's empty, nobody's here. Everyone on screen keeps cursing. Why did I let this happen? And the whole thing looks like it was shot through a glass of milk. My mom's gonna be so mad. If you're looking for a heart attack, the short way, baby. Wrong, I did put mayonnaise on it. I'm the yeah. most in shape, overweight person you'll find. That's right. He was like, why didn't you answer my call? I called you 39 times. Yuck. But what makes you stop right before 40? You know, what makes you say, so that's wrong nah, number. man, I doing that no more. <laughs> I'm cool. And I called you back on the air. And I was like, okay, Kevin Smith, big shot. What the f you said you'd come on and you didn't come on. I'm sure I took that very well. <laughs> yeah, you did. You called me back the next day and said, I thought it was 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and there's now deep fake porn. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. I've heard of it. I just had some in the car. I'll tell you who I'm not f***ing, <laughs> Ben Mankiewicz. Have right. you guys ever felt that? Not ever. And now it's just the three of us. This is the intimate hour. By the way, the last half hour of this, we're not even rolling. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, man. Ah, see, I watch movies. I'm done with both of you. Okay. <laughs> Once Craig starts laughing, I can't stop. And I was just going to ask you about getting high, snoogans. Snoochie Boochies. And members, of course, you can get the whole damn thing. TYT.com, join and free trial. And old school with the old folks. Good John, night. come back! Are you ready for me? Get you ready? Ah! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
time to switch the gears. It's oh, man. Oh, God. Do your best. He's a little like Tom. Oh. Oh, no one's happy now. Give him another try. Oh, wow. This is the weirdest game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brett. I would like to refer to this segment as the Do I Still Have This Talent show. So I want to see if I can play harmonica without my hands. I don't know why I have that. Nothing's gonna be more impressive than that. <laughs> I can also spin a basketball on my finger. While drinking. While drinking. I'm gonna spin a basketball on my finger while drinking apple juice. You can do this, dude. It's also flat. I don't know if that helps or hurts. And it seems to be somewhat wobbly. Ta-da! Nope, I don't know how to do this one. This one's a fail. Nope. Oh God, I'm so mad. Welcome back. We got a lot of viewer comments. Let me read some of these comments. Uh, thank you all for always being so engaging with the program. TYT member Rob says, why can't we pay teachers like that what they are worth? Exactly. Uh, Mickey C the Silver Hair Dragon, WTF, OMG? That goes beyond just hateful. 
the violence exhibited is frightening. Those kids need to be given psych evaluations and, and so do the parents, okay? YouTube Super Chat, Bernard the Kiwi Dragon says, of course it happens in Florida. Virtually nine out of 10 times is either Florida or Texas. What can you expect when they vote Ron DeSantis for governor? Nicole Smith says, if they have been black brandishing a weapon at a white pride rally, <laughs> they would not have survived, let alone be free to defend themselves two years later. And just think about the optics of that. Think about if a black male got out of his vehicle brandishing a handgun with 11 year old white children. Totally different narrative, totally different response, okay? All right, um, Sweet P says, TikTok, IG, social media, five minutes of fame and the need to be in the spotlight is their downfall. Um, oh, thank you for that, is uh, Donna Frio. Thank you for that, Alex. All right, rainy days, future leaders. Yeah, not so much, right? Uh, Derek, welcome to tier one. Okay, Twitch, Captain Cornball. Is it Cornball? Yeah. Riverside High School, formerly Lee High. I wonder which Mr. Lee that high school in the South used to be named after. <laughs> I give you one guess, okay? Um, Spoonie 6157, um, Chateau. We need more teachers like Amy Donofrio. Yes. Uh, Butch, Dream Daddy. I'm not saying that again, Butch. It's one time. All right, I love this show, thank you so much. We love you back, Butch, okay? All right, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, we have Ashley St. Clair, author of Elephants Are Not Birds and Director of Operations at Arsenal Media Group. Ms. St. Clair, thank you for being on the show. How are you? Good, how are you, Dr. Ritchie? I'm doing quite well. Uh, we're going Good. to chop it up about a few items. Hopefully we get to all of them. Um, let's start with the anti-vax, anti-mask movement in the United States of America. I don't want to presume what you believe about these items. So I will simply ask you to give me your context and your background as it relates to the anti-vax and anti-mask movement. I think my take would be really simple. I don't think that the government should be mandating vaccines or masks anywhere. And I'll leave it at that, especially what we're seeing in New York City to go into restaurants or things like that to have to have a vaccine passport. Especially me, I'm seven months pregnant. I don't want to have to be forced to get something that I'm uncomfortable with. Um, especially that I don't know the long term effects on me and my baby um, right now. So I think that it's just something that it has gone too far with the government ma mandates and it's as simple as that. Okay, so let me say this. First of all, the government is not mandating that you receive a vaccination. Um, a private company that's, that says we would like to see a uh, vaccine passport. Well, that is a private company. Uh, typically, you all do believe in private enterprise or the consumer driving that market for that private company. Uh, private companies are able to enforce things like no shirt, no shoes, no mask, no service. Do you agree with companies having the right to enforce those particular rules as it relates to their consumers on their private property? Of course, are you familiar with what was passed in New York City? No, go ahead, ma'am, you can go ahead and- Enlighten us. Okay, so so businesses are forced to, I mean, you have to have a vaccine to do recreational activity. So that's gone beyond private enterprise. This isn't, you know, the movie theater decided, hey, we would prefer that our patrons have a vaccine if they come in. This was Mayor de Blasio saying, you need to have a vaccine if you want to enjoy these things. Okay, let me bring your attention to something I find quite interesting. Um, when you say that there should not be a mask a mandate, Typically, we're talking about children. If you look at social media, um, the biggest debates and the most chaotic scenes are at school boards now. Who would have thought that school board meetings would have been so damn exciting, okay? So the <laughs> fundamental question is, the first question is, do school boards even have the legal authority 
to mandate mask. What are your thoughts about that? Do you believe school boards have the legal authority to do so? I think they can, but I don't think they should at all. Okay. Um, I think those are two different questions and I can't believe you can't see how school boards could get on a hand if you've ever been to a PTA meeting. <laughs> um, <laughs> Listen, no, I'm a I, former I high school <laughs> teacher. Um, I've been to a number of school boards. I've never seen school boards get this out of hand though. Yeah, you know, and I don't think kids are not at risk. I really don't see the need for mandating masks on children. I okay. just don't. So let's talk about um, what kids are already mandated to do, right? So I agree with you that mask mandates are permissible for a school board to implement. Okay, we agree on that. You have more of a moral or ethical argument saying, but it's not pragmatic. It shouldn't be done, even though it, legally it can be. Well, done. not even just pragmatic. It's it's wrong. You know, I could curse you out on here and you know do whatever, but it would be wrong, correct? And I feel the same way about mask mandates on children. You just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should or that it's morally okay. right. Well, wrong means morally reprehensible. So yes. you think having a mask mandate is in fact morally reprehensible? I mean, if you want to equate my position to morally reprehensible because I think it's wrong, mm-hmm. um, sure, I, <laughs> you can go ahead and say that. I do think it's reprehensible to um, affect children in that way. The okay. uh, impacts it has on their their learning, on their societal. Um, on their the way they're able to build relationships. Um, I, I don't think we really know the full term effects of that yet. All right, so let me do this first because we already have multiple mandates um, for children inside of school systems. Children do not have a free reign to dress as they choose. They do not have free well, reign. Well, let me be utilize. really clear too. <laughs> let me be really clear. I don't like the public school system in general. I think they go too far. I think they mandate too much, too many things in general. Okay, so, I'm going to ask you about some of those ahead. mandates. Go ahead. Okay. Children do not have the um, right to wear whatever they choose to wear. Uh, they cannot utilize whatever language they choose to utilize uh, without uh, penalty uh, because of the environment of the school system. And also, currently, there are already mandates for vaccines for um, all of public education in the United States of America. And 92% of private institutions mandate a level of vaccination. So these are the common ones. Uh, that are already mandated for measles, mumps, uh, chicken pox, Correct. polio. Correct, if you've done any uh, research ma- madam, on if me. If you would, madam, I have not interrupted you. I'm gonna ask sure. that you don't interrupt me, okay? Totally, my Thank apologies, you. go ahead. Absolutely, so these are already mandated, polio, etc. And they've been mandated for decades inside of school systems throughout the United States of America. Do you have a fundamental issue with these vaccinations being already mandated? Or do you just have an issue with a non chemical being mandated known as the mask and you're okay with these chemical mandates that are already implemented in the school system. No, I'm not okay with the other mandates either. If you've done any research on me, you know that I have tweeted, I can't count how many times homeschool Mm -hmm. your kids um, for reasons just like this. And if you wanna go back to what you said about hate, You know, you can't say whatever you want in school. Yeah, usually because kids can be mean, so they have anti-bullying things, uh, things that cause harm. Whereas, you you can't use profanity either. Yeah, yeah, because those things cause harm. Whereas, not wearing a mask for kids does not really cause harm, especially if you look at the data on on kids being harmed by COVID. I don't know if you saw the latest report that came out yesterday by the CDC um, that said that the uh, increase in COVID nineteen among children has increased to a staggering rate. Experts are saying it is going to get worse. Uh, Look at Alabama, for example. In one week, Alabama had to hospitalize over 50 children, one week. We went months without hospitalizing any children before the variant came. Once the variant came, it impacted children in a way that the first uh, rendering rendering of COVID did not, excuse me. So you can't say that the science is on your side with this. Also, masks bring down the spread of COVID-19 from 40 to 60%. And if they are worn properly, it brings it down by 90%. 
Once again, that's a safety issue inside of the school system. So you can't argue that children are now not being impacted by this, what I call DeSantis variant. They are being impacted by it in ways that they were not impacted by the original COVID. So tell me how do you reconcile the numbers here? Because the science is saying that this variant is much more severe for children than the original COVID-19. What is the death rate for children? Could you inform me on that? So only if children die, should this be an issue? Because it's not dangerous. Children are not dying from this, they're getting sick. Yes, just hmm. like they do with the flu. There's lots of kids who are hospitalized with the flu. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I think the impacts of children having to wear masks are much more dangerous than kids getting sick. And so how many of these cases number. of children being hospitalized? First of all, anybody who goes to the hospital is considered hospitalized. They don't, it, you're, very rarely are you turned away from the hospital. So no, how that's many incorrect. of these are- You're incorrect, no. no, 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 no. That's not how the data, no, that is not how the CDC codified so, so the data. What, so what is the, the hospitalization? What, what is defined as a hospitalization? I'm glad you asked the question, I will explain it to you clearly. When you're hospitalized, that means that you have been admitted by the medical staff to be observed, okay? Going to Correct. a hospital. I've been, I've been admitted. A, I've been madam, admitted for a madam, UTI before. Madam, you asked me a question, madam. I'm trying to give you clarity and answer it. Being hospitalized does not mean you went to the hospital. Being hospitalized does not mean you went to the ER or even saw a doctor. The way the data is codified, being hospitalized means that you were admitted by medical staff for further treatment and observation. That's what that means. So let's talk about the severity of COVID-19. The severity of COVID-19 for this is this with children. So while they're not dying at the rate of adults, those with underlying issues especially, are at risk of death and those who do not have underlying issues are suffering from respiratory issues for the rest of their life. More than likely, they will never be able to fully recover their respiratory issue based on their COVID interaction. The issue is this, inside of a school system, will wearing a mask decrease the transmission of COVID? That's a simple question. I don't believe that there, I believe that the impacts of masks are worse. That's a different argument and I will get to that argument in a moment in all due respect. My only question for this part of the argument. I don't know that it's effective because what I've read is that the only mask that's effective is N95. Should we mandate N95s for all these kids? Because half the kids I see are wearing cloth ones that they got at TJ Maxx. Okay, so your rebuttal is that it is not effective. Now I do find this quite interesting because the place where you get your data as far as the death rate of children is concerned is the same place where I get my data as it relates to the effectiveness of wearing masks. So you accept one data set from that same organization, the CDC, but you reject the data set that says you decrease the spread of COVID when you do wear a covering on your face. No, now, I, just said the the one, I just said the one that was effective is an N95. Most of these kids are not wearing N95s, they're wearing cloth okay. ones from Target or TJ Maxx. Okay, so you would be okay with the school system mandating that? No, at, at no, I don't think they should mandate it. Even if it is effective in slowing the spread of COVID-19. Even, even if it's correct. effective? Correct, even if it, it, it would be effective in slowing the spread of the flu. I don't think kids should be masked for that reason. This is not the argument here. I don't think, think they should wear them. Even if it's effective, I don't think they should be wearing them. Do you think we are in uncharted territory with COVID? To an extent, um, and I Explain. think that I think it relies that that question. The answer um, is dependent on where you think COVID came from. And where do you think it came from? I genuinely believe that this was something that came from China, from Wuhan. Okay, and tell me why does that matter? Because if there is, you know, a foreign nation testing with biological weapons, it is something that we need to take more seriously, and I think that's why we did take it more seriously in the mm, beginning. So we need to take it more seriously, right? No, that's not what I said. You didn't say we need to take it more seriously. No, I said I, we took it more seriously in the beginning because we didn't know, and that's why China had locked mm. down, and I think that scared us as well because of how um, insane China was was about it. But then once more, this data came out, and we found out that hey, it's actually not as deadly 
um, as we once thought. We should ease restrictions. We should ease things like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, at, at first, so many people were scared, and I think rightfully so because we didn't we didn't know. Um, but now that we have more data, we realize that this thing is is not as deadly uh, as we thought. It shouldn't be the madness that's going on now. It shouldn't be the lockdown lockdown that shouldn't be the mandates. Let me ask you this, are you a local government person? Do you believe that local government should have the right to make these decisions based on that community and what they're getting in their data based on science? No, not always. No, so you're not a local government person. I like local government, but I don't, mm-hmm. I I believe local and federal government have their restrictions and they can, mm-hmm. you know, they do. power does corrupt. People tend to get high on power. More yeah, but so mask is within mask is within government mask or a mask mandate by school board is within the government authority. You you already agreed to that. That's not drunk think, with power. That's and I've already the said authority. that I don't. Two things: I don't think that they should, mm-hmm. and I don't think that you should have your kids in public school. What about those that don't have a choice, madam? That is very unfortunate. That's really it's unfortunate. Just unfortunate. And I think, wait a yes, minute. Yes, I think if and they I don't think they should fight back. If they don't have a choice. People, I think that's really unfortunate, and I think people need to get involved, <laughs> and they need to run for their school boards. <laughs> madam, the school boards, madam, you just told people to get involved. You're all over the place. You told people to get involved and run for their school board. School board, they oversee what? What do they oversee? The school. You're talking about people who don't have a choice but to put their kids in. Ma'am, school, correct? the school board. You're telling people to run for school board. What does the school board oversee? The school. The school board oversees public education. Correct. So why are you telling people to take all of their children out of public education, but to run for a board that literally only oversees no, public I'm, education? That's definitely unfair. I'm talking about the people who you said don't have a choice but to put their kids in school. If you have so, a choice to take your kids out, take them out. So the solution for and you- And if you is, don't, make sure that you're more involved. Then you know, if you can't keep your kids out of public school, be more involved. Your solution I think is- you're, you're absolutely misrepresenting my ideas. No, I'm confused by it. I'm trying to get clarity though. I'm not misrepresenting anything. I think that's pretty clear. I think that I think that's pretty clear. Okay, um, let me go to a point that I wanted to discuss with you, the flu versus COVID. I hear this comparison being made a lot. Uh, that this is no more dangerous than the common flu. So let me give you just one statistic about um, the peak season for one week of the flu. We're talking about death rate is 700 plus. Uh, the peak season for death um, with COVID is 15 to 20,000 in one week. Uh, the death rate is not comparable. As far as the infection rate, the infection rate of the flu in the United States of America is 0.1%. The infection rate for COVID-19 is one to 3% depending on that region. So when you talk about the carnage that it creates and the severity of the symptoms as well as the number of dead bodies, it's not comparable whatsoever. Then you start looking at the adverse impact that COVID has had on people's lives beyond the illness. Once again, not comparable to the flu at all. My only gesture to you and others is this. We don't fully know this virus yet. We're still dealing with a variant. The variant just got here. We may be dealing with another variant based on the experts, which means once again, another mutation. The question is really simple. Because we don't have a handle of this like people say, we don't. Why would we not listen to local school boards and simply allow them to make the decision based on the local science of what's happening to their own children. Why would we not listen to them as it relates to the safety and protection of their kids? Are we no longer believing in school teachers? We're not believing in the local elected representatives. Remember, you're telling people to run for school board, but the people that are on the school board who already ran for school board, who have to make decisions about that public school system, you all are adversarial to them. So, so what is the question exactly? Uh, Do you not think we should be cautious that we should allow local boards to make this decision based on the science and data available to them? Sure, they can make that that decision and the parents have the right to fight it and disagree with it. And I think uh, just like many other parents out there that it's it's wrong. And I think it's unfair for you to conflate some of these COVID deaths when you're, you're not talking about what percentage of them 
have comorbidities and different things like that. It's a lot more dangerous to uh, to be obese <laughs> and be around COVID than to be a kid not wearing a mask. You know, people make that argument a lot. And let me give you a humanist argument. You may have an underlying health condition right now. Most people who are overweight do not listen, have underlying health conditions. Listen to me, please. You may, I may, we're still human beings. If COVID more so adversely affects- Because if you if you wanted may, to save lives- Madam, you would I'm tell going to this allow way. you to finish and then I will respond. Go ahead, you finish? If, if you wanted to save lives, if you wanted mm -hmm. people to be safe, you would tell them to care about their health, to eat mm -hmm. right, to lose weight. Because you have such a, a higher risk of dying from COVID. If, if you're overweight. I do, I tell um, people to be healthy, I do. All right, you ready for my response? Just wait. <laughs> yeah, I tell people we should be healthy. Are you we ready going for my response? You're at all because that's what I was pitched on coming on here. Say, say what now? Are we gonna talk about gender at all? Because that's what I was pitched on coming on here. Madam, I'm looking at the production notes. It says anti-vax, anti-mask and LGBTQ. Great, so we didn't hit on that last one at it, all, right? Wait a minute, is that what you have in your production notes or not? Yes, yes. Okay, we so you weren't one. pitched just to come on my show to talk about gender, correct? Yes. Am I right or wrong? Uh, yes, uh, but we haven't touched on that at all and I'm getting Okay, five because minutes. we got into the uh, minutia of this mess about um, what you feel or believe children should be. As far as mask mandates are concerned, that's how debates go. But let's go ahead and get into gender. Whatever you want to say about gender, say it. I just don't want you misrepresenting what we provided for you in the production notes because we yeah. clearly so, said to you. So I mean, we're going to hit on that. Vaccines a, yeah. and LGBTQ. Sometimes we don't get to all the subjects, but go, go ahead. So are we going to hit? Did you have anything prepared on that topic or? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll wait for you. You've asked me on, on each one. Do you one, believe I'll that the LGBTQ it. community should have the same rights as anybody else? Yes. Okay. Yes. Was that, was that what was preparing? Was that the lean in? Ma'am, do you have anything to say or not? Yes. What's your point of I view? Just, because I, I feel like you didn't actually have anything prepared and you just wanted to go on this tangent oh, about- well, first of all, um, First of all, you're a damn lie about my preparation, madam. I prepare very well for every topic that we will potentially cover. Sometimes we don't get to all the topics. Sounds like to me you're not prepared. I'm giving you free reign to say whatever you want to say and debate me on that topic. Go. <laughs> I, that's fine. If you didn't prepare, we can keep talking about What the, the hell are you talking about didn't prepare? I'm telling you, say whatever you want to say about the LGBTQ community and I will debate you right here on my show. I was Go. I came here. I came here to see what you wanted to talk about in relation to that topic. Did I not? I'm, it's right here. It's the topic that's in front of you. What are your thoughts about the rights of the LGBTQ community? I What's believe they should have just as much yes, access and I do too. as anybody I do too. else. I do too. If that's your question, then there's no debate there. Then that's great, ma'am. I'm sure there's something you disagree with me on. I don't know you that well. Yeah. Tell me something. Listen, sounds like this is what you want to debate. I'm giving you the opportunity to bring it to the forefront. Go. Your question is if I think, man, we got two the LGBT. Correct. Your question is if you think if I think people in the LGBT community should have rights. The answer is yes. Should have all of the rights as anyone else. Yes. Okay. There's no debate there with me. Then there's you no got something debate. you want to debate me about. No, I was just curious because you guys had told me we were going to debate about that. Ma'am, what's your debate about it? I guess there is none. I guess there is none. That's my apologies. I must have been confused because that's what I was told. Okay, you're being a silly Billy, but I do appreciate you being on the show. Okay, thank, thank you, you ma'am. Have a good day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just remember take care of yourself, take care of each other. And take care of this planet. And remember, the truth is always indisputable.